People think that space is a quiet and desolate vacuum of emptiness. Between the stars and planets, there exists a vast realm of nothingness. However, space is very active. Traveling throughout the cosmos are a variety of signals broadcasting their presence to anyone who will listen. Many of these signals are stars, quasars, and other celestial phenomena. Yet some of these signals, perhaps many of them, are extraterrestrial beings talking to each other, and perhaps talking to us. <laughs> Stars and planets each have a unique radio signature. For example, Jupiter's magnetic field hisses and sighs. Neptune sounds like a vast, desolate ocean. of Uranus chime. And Saturn has an eerie bold sound of wind and tone. the Earth emits a multitude of signals from all the radio transmitters around the globe, sending signals into deep space to anyone who can tune them in. The question is, is there anyone out there listening? And if so, are they trying to contact us? Perhaps they already have. On August 15, 1977, a strong narrowband radio signal was received by Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope. The signal appeared to come from the constellation Sagittarius and bore the expected hallmarks of extraterrestrial origin. Astronomer Jerry R. Eman discovered the anomaly a few days later while reviewing the recorded data. He was so impressed by the result that he circled the reading on the computer's printout and wrote the comment, wow, on its side, which is how the event has since been referred to. The entire signal sequence lasted 72 seconds, the window the big ear was able to observe it but has not been detected since, despite several subsequent attempts by Ehrman and others. Various hypotheses on the source of the emission has been put forward, although the possibility of a natural origin has not been completely discounted. To date, the WOW signal is considered the best candidate for an alien radio transmission ever received. In 2012, on the 35th anniversary of the WOW signal's reception, 
scientists at the Arecibo Observatory beamed a response from humanity containing 10,000 Twitter messages in the direction from which the signal originated. They attempted to increase the chances of any intelligent life receiving and decoding the celebrity videos and crowdsourced tweets by attaching a repeating sequence header to each message, so the recipient will know that the messages are intentional and from another intelligent life form. That signal is now traveling in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius at the speed of light. One can only hope it is received by benevolent extraterrestrials. signal and our response is not the first time scientists have intentionally sent a signal into space with the hope someone may receive it. In 1974, Carl Sagan sent a broadcast known as the Arecibo message into space via radio waves. The message aimed at ET was the most powerful radio broadcast ever beamed into space by mankind. In comparison, the signal sent out into space was a million times stronger than that of a typical television transmission. Directed to a star cluster located over 25,000 light years away, the pictorial message was sent in hopes that one day we would receive a similar response. The radio signal included our planet's location within our star system, core principles of math and science, and the antenna that was used to transmit the signal, all characteristics that an intelligent alien civilization should understand. The message prepared by Carl Sagan and his colleagues also included information about our species, even our physical appearance, as well as our DNA code. 27 years later, in 2001, a crop circle appeared, shaking the scientific community. A pattern appeared on a crop field next to the UK's largest telescope and observatory, the Chilbolton, where the world's largest fully steerable meteorological radar is located. This circle in wheat looked like a response to the 1974 broadcast. It was considered by many as one of the most impressive and important crop circles ever to appear on our planet, since the crop circle, unlike others, carries a message, or better said, a response from space. Describing a different solar system in the universe, the image of the sender, non-human DNA, and some microwave antenna the Chibolton crop circle was the ultimate response we had ever hoped for. According to mathematicians, the decimal equivalents of the binary code were unchanged from the Arecibo original, but the atomic numbers of the elements composed the basics of life had been altered. Silicon, an element with an atomic number of 14, was added precisely in the correct sequence between oxygen and phosphorus. All of the information in the crop image is consistent with a response from an extraterrestrial source. Whether or not the crop circle that appeared next to the Chibolton was in fact an alien response is still up for debate. However, many people are firmly convinced that not only is the crop circle of 2001 a real message from another intelligent alien civilization in the universe, but we receive similar messages nearly every day. Indeed, messages from space have been around since the inception of radio itself. Nikolai Tesla, the inventor of radio, was convinced he received messages from aliens at the turn of the 20th century. 
Tesla was the first to attempt to communicate with neighboring worlds using radio waves. In 1899, he was at his laboratory in Colorado Springs, driving monstrous surges of power into the earth and also beaming energy outward from the 280-foot tower he had built. He had instruments to record electromagnetic disturbances from all around. During the tests, Tesla began picking up odd data on his instruments. He was sure that this was a signal of some sort. Keep in mind that no one at that time could have been transmitting other than Marconi who was just beginning tests in Italy. The signals came periodically and with such a clear suggestion of number and order that they were not traceable to any cause then known to man. Tesla was familiar with electrical disturbances produced by the sun, the aurora borealis, and earth currents, and was sure that these variations were due to none of those causes. A purpose was behind these signals. They are the results of an attempt by some human beings, not of this world, to speak to us by signals. I am absolutely certain that they are not caused by anything terrestrial. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I had been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. The Martians or the inhabitants of whatever planet had signaled to us would understand that once we had caught their message across the gulf of space and had sent back a response, to convey a knowledge of form by such means is, while difficult, not impossible, and I have already found a way of doing it. Did Tesla's experiments transmit radio signals to some of our nearer planets? Had Tesla unintentionally detected signals from another civilization, or did he simply make an error? Probably we'll never know. Because of his financial problems, the large part of his research notes and other papers were auctioned off after his death. Also lost are much of his other research papers. How much of Tesla's work remains hidden and confiscated? It's unknown, and thus, much of his scientific work of great value has been lost forever. In a rare case published in 2016, scientists have discovered not radio signals, but rather light beams emanating from space that could be extraterrestrials trying to communicate. The claim of two scientists that they may have found evidence of intelligent aliens is raising some astronomers' eyebrows. Appearing in the journal publications of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, the pair's study reports that 234 stars out of over 2 million surveyed have signals in the form of light pulses they say are best explained by intelligent ETs from far away. After discussing a couple of explanations for what could be causing the signals, the study states, finally, we consider the possibility, predicted in our previous published paper, that the signals are caused by light pulses generated by extraterrestrial intelligence to make us aware of their existence. What's more, these signals have exactly the shape that scientists would expect to see from intelligent aliens, according to the study. But the Berkeley SETI Research Center says more research is necessary and it is too early to unequivocally attribute these purported signals to the activities of extraterrestrial civilizations. The organization said that they will observe some of the stars in question using a nearly 8-foot optical telescope called the Automatic Planet Finder and that they look forward to consulting with the scientists behind the controversial claim. 
controversy comes onto the heels of new data about a strange star that's been dimming in recent years, leading some to speculate about an alien megastructure. Tabby Star, an F-class star located in the constellation Cygnus with an official long numerical name, has befuddled many scientists due to its light emissions. Unusual light fluctuations of the star were discovered by citizen scientists as part of the Planet Hunters project in September of 2015. Several hypotheses have been proposed to explain the star's large irregular changes in brightness as measured by its unusual light curve, but none have fully explained all aspects of the curve. The leading hypothesis, based on a lack of observed infrared light, suggests a swarm of cold, dusty comet fragments in a highly eccentric orbit near the star. Another hypothesis is that of a large number of small masses in tight formation orbiting the star. However, the most common and perhaps frightening theory is that the changes in brightness could be signs of activity associated with intelligent extraterrestrial life constructing a Dyson's Sphere. A Dyson's Sphere is a hypothetical megastructure that completely encompasses a star and captures most or all of its power output. This energy could be used to sustain a civilization indefinitely and would explain the 20% loss of light output from the star. If not a sphere, then possibly a swarm of satellites, space stations, or even ships in close formation near the star could cause this dimming effect. The SETI Institute's initial radio reconnaissance of Tabby Star however, found no evidence of technology-related radio signals from the star. A fundraising campaign was led by Tabitha Boyet, the author of the initial study on the star's anomalous light curve. The project proposes to use the Las Cumbres Observatory Global Telescope Network to continue observation of the star in the future and observe it in additional wavelengths to reveal new details on the composition of the objects surrounding the star. The campaign raised over $100,000, enough for one year of observations. Scientists believe the likelihood of extraterrestrial intelligence being the cause of the dimming is low. However, the star remains an outstanding SETI target because natural explanations have yet to fully explain the dimming phenomenon. Strange signals from space have occurred many times in the past. Most are either not confirmed or do not repeat so they can be clarified. In 2016, a star in the constellation of Hercules briefly attracted media attention after it was reported that a possible SETI signal had been detected from the direction of the star in the previous year. The signal was only heard once and never confirmed by other telescopes, and it is thought to have been due to terrestrial interference, though no one knows for sure. It was observed only once, for two seconds, by a single team at a single telescope. Several attempts to find and record the signal were made by astronomers around the world. No signal was detected at the position and frequency of the transient reported by the Rattan Group. In May of 2015, Russian astronomers received a weak signal from a solar system some 94 light years away. That system has a star similar to our Sun. There's one known planet circling that star, about the size of Neptune and very close to the star. The signal was unusual in its design and beam shape. 
Astronomers thought the signal was interesting, but since it didn't repeat, they have nothing more to go on. Italian scientists were baffled by nearly two dozen radio sources from deep space that could potentially be coming from extraterrestrial life. Italian scientists spent several months observing the signals and could not pinpoint their source. The absence of light in the optical or ultraviolet spectrums rules out stars as the source. On May the 18th of 2016, the scientists wrote they had detected significant emissions in the soft X-ray band for nine of the investigated sources. Because these signals were coming from deep space, it was not apparent which specific star may be the origin. The Italian scientist requested further infrared studies of the area to determine their nature. Humans should be extremely wary about answering any signals from alien civilizations. That's the stark warning from Professor Stephen Hawking, who fears extraterrestrials would quickly conquer our planet. The renowned astrophysicist voiced the fears during his new online show, Stephen Hawking's Favorite Places. He believes there could be life on other worlds, but warns a meeting between civilizations would resemble when Columbus met Native Americans, adding that that didn't turn out well. Hawking said as he grows older, he is more convinced than ever that we are not alone. One day we might receive a signal from a planet like this, but we should be wary of answering back. Hawking's references his involvement in the Breakthrough Listening Project, a 10-year, $100 million initiative funded by a Russian billionaire. This groundbreaking project aims to fire tiny spacecraft into the furthest reaches of deep space. This project also plans on using the world's most sensitive radio telescopes to listen in on 10 times the amount of sky than was previously achieved. Hawking said the real challenge is to work out what aliens might actually be like. Fast radio bursts, or FRBs, occur occasionally and no one knows what is causing them. Usually an FRB only happens once, a single burst coming from an unknown part of the sky. But in a paper published in Nature, researchers found a repeating sequence of a total of 10 FRBs. Not only did these bursts repeat, but their brightness and spectra also differ from those of other FRBs. So now, instead of just one strange category of weird radio signals, astronomers have a totally new category to deal with. There is some speculation that instead of being caused by an explosion or other cataclysm, these repeating FRBs was caused by a rotating neutron star, but they won't know until they can get more information. The universe is teeming with weird and unusual radio signals. Many boggle the mind as to where they may be coming from or from whom. But space is not the only place you can find strange signals. Here on Earth, there are radio transmitters sending signals that may be intended for extraterrestrial ears. Here on Earth, there is a phenomenon of bizarre radio signals you can listen to yourself. No one knows their purpose, or in some cases, where they are being broadcast from. They are called number stations and could be a way governments communicate with spies or even ETs living here on Earth. 
Most assume a number station is a category of shortwave radio stations characterized by broadcasts of formatted numbers addressed to intelligence officers operating in foreign countries. Most identified stations use speech synthesis to vocalize numbers, although the digital modes such as phase shift keying and frequency shift keying as well as Morse code transmissions are also used. UVB-76, also known as the buzzer, is the nickname given by radio listeners to a shortwave radio station that broadcasts on the frequency of 4625 kHz. It broadcasts a short, monotonous buzz tone repeating at a rate of approximately 25 tones per minute, 24 hours a day. Sometimes the buzzer signal is interrupted and a voice transmission in Russian takes place. The first reports were made of a station on this frequency in 1982. Its origins have been traced to Russia, and although several theories with varying degrees of plausibility exist, its actual purpose has never been officially confirmed and remains a source of speculation. The creepy and sometimes incoherent broadcasts from UVB-76 sounds like this. Other number stations have different broadcasts, such as these. Whatever these signals are, they have mystified listeners since the 1970s when they were first detected by amateur radio enthusiasts. Since then, listeners have monitored these stations and heard many bizarre things, such as what appears to be phone conversations, alien signals, alien language, and even a fight with the microphone accidentally left open. Using modern computer technology and audio software, listeners have scoured the signals for hidden messages and signals within signals. Both male and female voices have been heard. Since their discovery, a small group of station enthusiasts have kept a close ear on these broadcasts, listening intently for whatever they do next. Internet message boards and groups have been founded to report unusual things heard from these transmitters. Whatever these signals are, like all AM broadcasts, they travel away from our planet into deep space and may even be some encrypted communication with extraterrestrial receivers, though their purpose can only be imagined. It is entirely possible that aliens have been receiving our signals and have been messing with our own spacecraft. Space probe Voyager 2, during its path through space, sent a message to its base on Earth in a quite unintelligible language. NASA, after over six years, did not know the reason, but they know that it cannot be accidental. Voyager 2 is the first spacecraft to leave the solar system in 2010 
and it was in the moments when the spacecraft would enter into interstellar space that a strange thing happened. NASA would consider someone or something had assumed control over it. NASA rebooted the spacecraft's computer to erase its message and now Voyager is continuing on its mission. Voyager 2 also contains a recording for E.T. should it ever be discovered by aliens. Perhaps they did and used the spacecraft's own transmitter to reply. NASA also reported that one of the Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatories, known as the Stereo B spacecraft, has made contact after two years of silence. When Stereo B went quiet in October of 2014, it was hardly considered a failure. Its mission was only supposed to last for two years. Like many NASA spacecraft, the stereo probes have been exceeding their shelf life. For some reason, the team still isn't sure exactly why, the spacecraft reacted poorly to the hard reset that its sister probe breezed right through. Stereo B let out a single weak signal, then went quiet. 22 months after the silent treatment began, Stereo B came back in communication with the Deep Space Network, the antenna system that NASA uses to pick up signals from its missions. No one knows what it was doing for 22 months. In 1999, a disaster investigation board reported that NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter burned up in the Martian atmosphere because engineers failed to convert units from English to metric. The $125 million satellite was supposed to be the first weather observer on another world, but as it approached the red planet to slip into a stable orbit, September 23rd, the orbiter vanished. Scientists quickly realized it was gone for good. It was pretty clear that morning, within half an hour, that the spacecraft had more or less hit the top of the atmosphere and burned up. NASA blamed themselves for the error, but was never sure exactly what caused the crash. The Russian Phobos program was an unmanned space mission consisting of two probes launched by the Soviet Union to study Mars and its moons Phobos and Deimos. Phobos 1 was launched on the 7th of July of 1988 and Phobos 2 on the 12th of July of 1988, each aboard a Proton K rocket. Phobos 1 suffered a terminal failure en route to Mars. Phobos 2 attained Mars orbit, but contact was lost before the final phase prior to deployment of a planned Phobos lander. Phobos 1 operated normally until an expected communication session on September 2nd failed to occur. The failure of controllers to regain contact with the spacecraft was traced to an error in which they had deactivated the attitude thrusters. By losing its lock on the sun, the spacecraft could no longer properly orient its solar arrays, thus depleting its batteries. No one knows if the software was tampered with. Phobos 2 arrived in January of 1989 and entered in orbit around Mars as the first phase towards its real destination, a small Martian moon called Phobos. The mission was flawless until the craft aligned itself with the moon. On March 28, 1989, an elliptical object was detected moving towards the satellite seconds before it failed. All indications were that the elliptical object had attacked the satellite, which was now dead and left spinning out of control. On March 28, 1989, TASS, the official Soviet news agency, stated, Phobos-2 failed to communicate with Earth as scheduled after completing an operation around the Martian moon Phobos. Scientists at Mission Control have been unable to establish 
stable radio contact. But the next day, a top official of the Soviet Space Agency said, Phobos 2 is 99% lost for good. It is important to note that he stated the entire satellite was gone and not just contact with it. Of great interest to ufologists was an image captured either on or above the surface of Mars, commonly called the shadow. Whatever caused this has never been determined. If it was indeed a craft, it is of immense size. On March 31, 1989, headlines dispatched by Moscow correspondents of the European News Agency stated, Phobos 2 captured strange photos of Mars before losing contact with its base. The space probe Phobos 2, which was orbiting above Mars when Soviet scientists lost contact with it, had photographed an unidentified object on the Mars surface seconds before losing contact. Scientists described the unidentified object as a thin ellipse 20 kilometers long. It was further stated that the photos could not be an illusion because it was captured by two different cameras, as well as cameras taking infrared shots. One controller at the Kaliningrad Control Center concluded that the probe was now spinning out of control. It would seem that something struck or shot the Phobos II probe. It has long been rumored that Mars and its moon Phobos are alien colonies. The surface of Mars is covered with strange shapes, buildings that do not appear to be natural, such as pyramids, square buildings, runways. Phobos itself has an unusual monument on it that has never been carefully photographed or explored. An alien UFO anomaly caused the explosion of this SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket slated to carry Facebook's Amos 6 satellite to space. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket exploded on the launch pad 40 during a pre-launch static fire test at Cape Canaveral, September the 1st of 2016. The explosion, according to a statement released on Facebook by Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, was caused by an anomaly that developed around the upper stage oxygen tank. The official video of the test firing of the rocket shows a UFO flying at incredible rate of speed past the space vessel and launch pad just before it exploded. A welder at the site posted a message that several minutes before the launch, personnel at the site had spotted UFOs in the sky over the facility. The video shows an object flying over and past the launch pad seconds before the explosion. Conspiracy theory analysis insists that the mysterious object was not a bird or a bug. High magnification analysis of the video, according to UFO researchers, shows an object that is clearly distinguishable in appearance and flight characteristics from all other birds that can be seen in the video flying in the vicinity of the launch pad before the explosion. To date, no one knows what caused the anomaly, and with a UFO clearly in the video frames, one can only imagine the true nature of this incident. To astronomers, black holes are the largest vacuum cleaners of the universe. Things go in, but never come out. 
two of NASA's space telescopes, including the Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, miraculously observed a black hole's corona launched away from the supermassive black hole. Then a massive pulse of X-ray energy spewed out. So what exactly happened? That's what scientists are trying to figure out now. The gravity is so strong around a black hole that it was believed that nothing in the known universe could come out of a black hole. Even light gets sucked in. It seems that we have been able to observe a phenomenon that has completely changed how we thought black holes functioned. An object actually exited the corona of the black hole and afterwards a flare of X-ray energy followed suit, leaving us completely baffled. When you think about how huge this object is, it really makes us wonder what it could possibly be. The black hole itself is 5 billion light years away and the object itself was thousands of miles wide. The radio X-ray transmission of this event was as much energy as the galaxy itself contains. This event has caused many to speculate that aliens may be using black holes to travel from one galaxy to another, using their unique power to fold space and travel great distances in a matter of a few minutes. Sometimes flares are seen in this area sometimes up to 10 per week. Some speculate that this could be the traffic of spacecraft using the black hole as a gateway to distant locations. If black holes in cosmic space travelers are not enough, speech patterns have been found in a radio signal released in 2004 recorded by the Cassini spacecraft when it passed through Saturn's rings. Judge for yourself what the voices are saying. It is a very bizarre anomaly, but very much worth investigating. Many researchers claim to hear voices in these sounds, leading people to wonder if alien transmissions are caught in the rings of Saturn and are bouncing around off the magnetic metals in the rings. In fact, some of these odd sounds could very well be from alien transmissions. Another weird phenomena is called sky wave transmissions. This is where transmissions from Earth are reflected back and are received years later. For example, on January the 15th of 2014, Henry Palbaya recorded the now famous Hindenburg disaster radio transmission from 1937. He was testing his home brew transmitter, recording his voice on 890 kilohertz, and the radio broadcast came in. Holding it uh, just enough to keep it from. It bursts into flames. Get it started. Get it started. It's flashing. It's flashing. It's flashing. Terrible. Oh my! Get out of the way, please. It's burning, bursting into flames, and, and it's falling on the morning fast, and all the folks between the fences. Terrible. This is the worst of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's just flashing. At first, he thought it may be a rebroadcast from a local station, but later found out that. Other frequencies were also receiving signals around the 1930s when he heard the station's ID and did some research. Radio scientists predict that in a few years the famous Orson Welles War of the Worlds broadcast may be able to be received again. Skywave propagations is a known scientific fact and signals traveling through space could get bounced around and received on Earth many times before they eventually fade away. If aliens are more advanced than us, 
many scientists believed that they would not use crude radio transmissions to communicate at all. All matter vibrates at a consistent rate. Even the fabric of the physical universe itself has a vibratory frequency. String theory says the universe is made of multiple kinds of vibrations. The vibrations are called strings because they are one-dimensional, like the strings on a guitar. The theory is if you pluck one of these strings, you could send a vibration throughout the universe. In essence, you would be using the fabric of the physical universe itself as a carrier and layering modulation on that carrier for communication. Like the internet, you could send binary messages, photos, video, voice, or music transmissions. Because the entire universe is being utilized to do this, distance is not a factor, because if you pluck the universe here, it would be heard anywhere within the universe itself. Aliens tapping into the fabric of the universe as a carrier could be sending and receiving transmissions in real time from anywhere to anywhere. Like a cosmic or galactic internet, entire civilizations could be talking to each other, sharing images, schematics, video, and learning from each other without actually meeting physically like we do with our primitive internet. Vibration is energy. Energy is vibration. All matter is energy. Therefore, matter does not exist. A rock is simply a very low vibration that is so slow it appears to be solid. The space between objects in a vacuum is actually energy. It is very low vibrations but exists and takes up space as connected atoms. This is the fabric of the physical universe itself. If we could build a device, a galactic modem, that uses this fabric as a carrier, we could theoretically log in to the universal internet and communicate with extraterrestrials from nearby or distant galaxies. We could learn from them and share information about ourselves while never leaving our own planet. Imagine the advanced technology we would gain from aliens many years older than us. Of course, any species using this technology would have to be advanced enough to have discovered it in the first place. We may be like a child discovering the internet for the first time. The universe could be a vast data storage system and network for life forms to access. You could write data into any physical object and store it there. If a universal internet does exist that races have been using, how would they welcome us to their cosmic information party? Would we even be able to understand the information being sent and stored there? How would we use that information? Technology can be useful or harmful in the wrong hands. Are we ready to join a galactic alliance of people freely communicating across the cosmos? If aliens are not using radio and television to communicate, they may know that we do. It's possible they have tried to interrupt our transmissions for messages they feel is important. In 1977, an unusual transmission was received by United Kingdom watchers from someone claiming to be an intergalactic association. The voice, which was disguised and accompanied by a deep buzzing, broke into the broadcast of the local ITV station Southern Television, overriding the UHF audio signal of the early evening news being read by Andrew Gardner from ITN.
to warn viewers that all your weapons of evil must be removed and you have but a short time to learn to live together in peace. The interruption ceased shortly after the statement had been delivered. Transmissions returned to normal shortly before the end of a Looney Tunes cartoon. Later in the evening, Southern Television apologized for what it described as a breakthrough in sound for some viewers. ITN also reported on the incident in its own late evening Saturday bulletin. The broadcast took over the sound only, leaving the video signal unaltered aside from some picture distortion. The incident caused some alarm locally and attracted considerable publicity in the next day's Sunday newspapers. The winter 1977 24th issue of Fordentine Times magazine featured a transcript of what they described as the short message that was broadcast. At times, it is difficult to make out. However, here is the entire message that was recorded along with text. The message began with a series of beats and then. In Australia, Mr. K. Packard's cricketers are still thinking about yesterday's high court decision, which did ban them playing a test match. This is the voice of Emma, representative of the Ashton Galactic Commander, speaking to you. For many years, you have seen us as knights and as scammers. We speak to you now to serve the as we have done to your brothers and sisters all over this, your planet Earth. This is in order that we may share in great awakening as the planet passes into a new age of Aquarius. The new age can be a time of great peace and liberation for your race. All your weapons of evil must be removed. The time for conflict is now past, and the race of which you are the part may proceed to the higher stages of its evolution if you show yourselves worthy to do this. Small groups all over the planet are learning this and exist to pass on the light of the dawning new age to you all. You are free to accept the rejection teachings of the Many go as wide as this. Well. The then they run out. Here now, the voice of Grimon, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. Be aware also that there are many false habits and guides at present operating on your world. They will suck your energy from you, the energy you call money, and will put it to evil ends, giving you worthless costs in return. Your inner divine self will protect you from this. You must be able to be sensitive to the voice of him. To this day, the source of the transmission has never been determined. 
But if it was indeed an alien broadcast, it seemed to be a dire warning for mankind, and yet hope towards the end. Though the message occurred in 1977, it fits our current political situation and world conditions perfectly. Is it possible that aliens from space have been monitoring us, know our future, and are trying to warn us with signals of extraterrestrial origin? Let's imagine super intelligent jellyfish searching for life beyond the ocean. So they send out pheromone signals. We humans, nor any land animals, are able to pick up these signals or respond to them in any way that the jellyfish can. Wouldn't that be similar to our approach with sending out radio signals into space? Why do we assume extraterrestrial life is just like us? and can understand our ways of communication. Perhaps aliens use some other method for communication. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence or SETI is a collective term for the scientific search for intelligent extraterrestrial life, monitoring electromagnetic radiation for signs of transmissions from civilizations on other worlds. SETI's effort is a passive experiment designed only to look for signals, not to send them. However, we are unintentionally transmitting signals into space, primarily radio, television, and radar signals, for more than 50 years. Our earliest TV broadcasts would have reached several thousand nearby stars. In a 50 light year radius, although any alien viewers would have to build a very large antenna to detect them, unless, of course, they have other technologies. ET may communicate using a variety of methods, such as light, pressure, sound, and even pheromones, which, of course, could not travel between stars. However, like us, they may send probes to explore distant worlds. Just as we have sent Voyager and Pioneer probes beyond our solar system, aliens may have probes on their way here, right now. Somewhere between interstellar spaces, a tiny space probe from another planet may be whisking its way through the ether for a final approach to the gravitational pull of our solar system. It could be transmitting curious beeps, hoping we will detect it. It's entirely possible they may attempt to contact us or any other civilization via some non-physical method, such as astral travel or interdimensional communication. Multiple signals and forms of communication could be out there that we are simply not spiritually advanced enough to acknowledge. Of course, aliens may have absolutely no interest in us, they could be completely aware of our existence, yet have no desire to talk to us. It's also possible they may go to great lengths to keep us from detecting any of their transmissions. They could simply be xenophobic or afraid of us. Modern UFO sightings would seem to support this idea, since no flying saucer has made any effort to land in an obvious place and its occupants request an audience with Earth leaders. UFOs appear to visit, do whatever they need to do, then leave without any specific effort to communicate directly with us. Beyond the few abduction cases where abductees are given messages or instruction, the aliens seem to have apathy towards us all as a species, in some cases having no more emotion towards us than a scientist would have for a lab rat. Science, of course, requires physical proof, something they can touch and test. For them, Abductions are just unsubstantiated stories. 
If we do receive a signal from space that is confirmed to be from extraterrestrials, there are a number of protocols nations would take to issue this information. First, it would need to be confirmed. Then the most likely scenario would be for the United Nations to issue a media report and the USA president would probably issue a statement regarding the signal and appease the public. After that, our world would change in dramatic and subtle ways. We would no longer think of ourselves as nations on an isolated planet alone in the night. Instead, we would likely embrace the knowledge that we are not alone and live in a vast universe with galactic neighbors. Our religions and beliefs would need to adjust to this new concept, which would take time. Just like the paradigm shift that occurred when the world slowly came to acknowledge our planet was round and not flat, and was not the center of the universe, our concepts and ideas will change to include this new paradigm. All of this could begin with a simple repeated beep from some source coming from the vastness of outer space. <laughs>